the socket it's in is 100 years, actually over 100 years old. It's an Edison patent socket, and it dates to about 1896, somewhere around there. And it's got the key switch on it as well. So the insulation in the bottom of the socket has a little piece of mica underneath the contact. They were brilliant back then. The, the people, when they designed something, it was made to last, you know. And you can see the knob and tube wiring on the board here. That's how they wired houses in the old days. This is what's known as open work on insulators. It's actually a close cousin to knob and tube. Here's knobs, and the tubes are little porcelain tubes, and you can see some on my display board. I've got more knob and tube on display back in the lighting section. You can see how they work. Like if you're going along and you gotta go through a joist, or you gotta go up through a ceiling or whatever, or up through a floor to the next story, you put these porcelain tubes through there so that when the wires go through, because these are individual separate wires, when the wires go through, they're insulated with porcelain instead of just being in, because you don't want the wires to be in contact with the wood anywhere. They gotta be on porcelain. These cleats, as they call them, these are what were used for open work wiring. In other words, these were what you would use if the wiring was on the surface like this. The knobs, of course, can also be used in, in conjunction, but if you notice, the knobs are taller than the cleats. The cleats hold the wire a half inch away from the surface, and the knobs hold the wires an inch away. There's a good reason for that. With surface wiring, it can be a half inch off the surface, because the wiring's all out where you can see it. And there's no problem, because if any of the wires get bent up against the ceiling or whatever, you can see it, you can straighten it out. But when the wires run in between the floor joists or ceiling joists, up inside of a ceiling or in a wall on the studs, you can't see the wiring, it's, it's hidden. So you don't want to take a chance of getting them too close because if, if a mouse gets in the wall or whatever and they get pushed against the stud, it defeats the purpose of the insulators. So they made the knobs taller to raise them higher off the surface to lessen the chance that a wire would, would end up touching the wood. Probably wouldn't do anything, the insulation was pretty good on these wires. It's rubber with cloth, but still, you know, it's not a good idea if you're running wires on porcelain to have them touch in the surface, it defeats the purpose. And, I mean, this switch is over 100 years old, and look at that. It's mechanical perfection. Ceramics as a whole <coughs> started with Edison as, as a uh, recognition because initially he'd just take copper bare wire and drill it through wood for the two conductors and after a while it would trip out and blow fuses or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he then had to f figure out a way to insulate the wire. Right. Meantime he got aware of the great pottery people in, in, in uh, Czechoslovakia and got the Cermak family to come over here to work for, I'll say Edison GE, it's plus or minus a year or two, mm -hmm. because just a piece of ceramic alone that they were using to make pottery didn't necessarily make a good electrical insulator. And uh, this sort of thing here, it's just a small start at what's needed for transmission insulators and so forth, particularly when lightning strikes. The Edison Tech Center presents Tech Reflections, an oral history which preserves stories about engineers, artists, and technicians. Their lives, achievements, and designs as told by the people who knew them or in their own words.